unity. Unity in Christ. Unity in the Holy Spirit. According to Google, the state of being united or joined as a whole. Unity. Or according to St. Paul, one body with many believers under the headship of Christ, sharing together the Holy Spirit. I'd like to talk to you a little bit about this piece of art that's here with us this morning. Melody Kirby, who is the founder of Mosaic Connection, made this for us today as a symbol for the body of Christ. We want to understand what it means to be unified. We want unity in our church. And this is a way to think about what God does when he draws us together as believers. This loom provides a framework for us to bring individual gifts represented by these strips of cloth, which a number of members of our congregation provided. Thank you very much for providing those. They're beautiful. And a little bit later this morning during our covenanting time, I'll invite you forward to weave a strip of cloth that you pick into this loom. And we'll see, as this loom is filled up, a beautiful picture of what God wants to do with our community as we bring ourselves the unique gifts that we have to this larger artwork that God is working. But before we think further about that, I wanted to share a scripture with you that means a lot to me, and I think is an important one to think of when we consider the loom. This is found in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, starting at verse 4. For when one says, I follow Paul, and another, I follow Apollos, are you not mere human beings? What, after all, is Apollos, and what is Paul? Only servants through whom you came to believe, as the Lord has assigned to each his task. I planted the seed, Apollos watered it, but God has been making it grow. So neither the one who plants nor the one who waters is anything but only God who makes things grow. The one who plants and the one who waters have one purpose, and they will each be rewarded according to their own labor. For we are God's co-workers. We are God's co-workers. You are God's field, God's building. So I'd like to take a minute here just to think about that passage visually with you as we look at this loom. What Paul's laying out for us here is something really important. Some say, I follow Paul. I follow Paul. I look to Paul as the source of my identity as a Christian. I look to Paul when I want to feel unified. And some people say, I follow Apollos. He's the teacher for me, and he's the one that will bring clarity and when I think of being a Christian, that's what I want to be, somebody who's connected with Apollos. And if you look elsewhere in the passage in 1 Corinthians, a little earlier, chapter 1, some say, I follow Cephas, which we know is the other name used for Peter in the New Testament. And some of us might think of other names to plug in. I follow Men of Simons. And what it means to be a Christian really is most fully expressed in following Ben of Simons. And what Paul really wants us to understand in our passage today is that it's not in the strands, it's not in the individual believers and their beautiful contribution that we find our unity, but it's in the larger framework of the body of Christ under the headship of Jesus that we find our unity. Each of these strands brings something incredibly important, and without them it would be incredibly diminished. But they fit together to form a larger picture. And we can actually benefit from realizing and embracing that. Paul says we are co-workers. He doesn't say our unity is grounded in these individuals, but we are co-workers with them under Christ. Our unity is in our Lord Jesus. And the word he uses for co-worker in this passage today is sunergeos, which means 
those who come alongside one another and work together for a common purpose or goal. They contribute to an end. They are fellow laborers. And so if we recognize that we come together, we get our English word synergy from this Greek word, we come together so that there is a combined effect which is greater than us as individuals. As we work together, there's something larger being done there's something larger resulting that is greater than us as individuals, and that's God's handiwork. That's the artistry of the beauty of this plan. So as we continue to think of this, we might add names like Rudy Stalford, the first minister of Worcester Mennonite Church, as another person we want to think of in our room. We might think of some influential members who have touched all of our lives, like Mary Hirschberger. as Christians. And as we continue to build the loom, we see the beauty of God's plan unfolding. So later today, when it comes to, to the covenanting together section of our service, I encourage you to please come forward. I invite you to come from the outside aisles, a row at a time, come forward, grab one of these strips of cloth, and think of it as yourself, as a gift or gifts that you bring to our church. Weave it into this loom and realize that it's a symbol of the body of Christ. That you are invited to participate in this wonderful, beautiful body of Christ. And remember our words from last week's passage, 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Remember the words well. At the end of our passage, we heard read, God has placed the parts of the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. God has placed every single part of the body everyone just as he wants them to be so these people we have represented up here lived in the time that they did because god wanted them to be there to serve the purpose that they did to be a blessing to us and he has us here each one of us for a reason so i ask you do you recognize how god has formed our congregation in this way with our many gifts that each one of you brings something important today what unique gift do you bring think about that how can the entire church benefit from your gift Keep these things in your mind as we continue through our service. And I look forward to the time when we can all come forward and symbolically express our unity, which is really our openness to work together under the Lordship of Jesus, to share together His grace in the Holy Spirit.